All right, let's take a look at some hyperbolite and see if we can actually produce the graph. Let's start with this one. y squared over 16 minus x squared over 49 equals 1. Let me just share with you exactly how I think about this so there's no sort of um, funny business. This negative sign tells me immediately that I'm talking about a hyperbola. The fact that the y comes first tells me that the hyperbola is actually going to be sort of going up and down. It's going to cross the y-axis. It's never going to touch the x-axis. And this 16 tells me that if I take the square root of that, that is where I'm going to cross the y-axis, at plus or minus square root of 16, plus or minus 4. And so what that tells me is that, in fact, my uh, vertices are going to be at a 0, 4, and negative 4. Now, that gets us going. Let's not be systematic. I just want to share with you exactly how I think about this thing. So the vertices we've just found are going to be at 0, negative 4, 0, 4. The co-vertices, they're going to be the values on the x-axis, where, where I get the square root of 49, which is going to be negative 7, 0, and 7, 0. And so where are the asymptotes? Well, remember that the asymptotes, in this case, are given by y equals, let me just write them down here, y equals plus or minus a over b x, where, remember, this is a squared, and that's b squared. So in our context, we see that the asymptotes are going to be at y equals plus or minus 4, square root of this, over 7, square root of that, x. Armed with that, we can actually sketch a not too bad graph of this. Let's put the information together together. Let's put the information together together. <laughs> Have you ever heard of together being said together? All right. So here we go. Uh, the vertices are 0, 4, and 4, 0. So let's put those points in. So 0, I'm sorry, not 0. 0, negative 4, right here. And 0, 4. There we go. So that's going to be sort of the low point of this wing, and this is going to be the high point of this wing. It's going to go down like this and up like that. And then what I can do is I can just now uh, draw these asymptotes in. These are straight lines. They start at the origin. And 1 has slope 4, 7. So I go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, over 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So one asymptote is going to sort of go right through this point and this point. Take a straight edge. I mean, a straight edge, actually, for these questions, are, it's not a bad idea since these do get a little bit involved. You might want to. I put it dotted just so that it won't dominate the picture because actually, actually, you know, it's not really the graph. It's just helpful. And then negative 4, 7. That means I drop 4 from the origin. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm right there. So I connect the origin with that point. So we get a reflection over the x-axis. So these two lines are reflections of each other through the x-axis. OK. And now, basically, my job is to just use my artistic skills to try to draw in the hyperbola that's going to start here and it's going to sort of head toward there. Now you can see it's going to be a very very shallow hyperbola, very shallow in the sense that it's going to take a, it's not going to be dramatic because I have to hug I have to start to hug toward that asymptote, you see? Hug toward the asymptote. Hug the asymptote. Hug toward the asymptote. So so there's my sketch of this particular hyperbola and you can see that this is capturing all the data that we found.